Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This is Joseph. Okay, today I'm going to talk about how to create the ultimate able to move set. When I'm talking about ultimate, I mean a flexible set that works for both synthesis and sampling. During the last week, I spent a lot of time with the able to move. I created more than a dozen of able to move sets. Some of them are on my YouTube channel, some of them are not. I learned a lot of things, I thought about a lot of things. I thought about how you can overcome the 4-track limit that uh, many people have criticized on the internet. I'm going to show you how you can expand that, how you can work around that so that it fits better with your workflow, how it fits better with your style of music. Over the last week or so, I spent a lot of hours going through my Ableton move set. Today I'm going to show you what I've learned and how you can use that knowledge to improve your workflow, how to improve your songs. So a lot of people criticize that the Ableton Move only has four tracks. When it comes to most groove boxes, that critique is real. If you're not familiar, drum racks contain samples. This is just like the MC 101's uh, rhythm track. Here you have a grid of 16 samples. The real power and flexibility comes when you start using drum racks for frankly non-drum stuff. Usually just you just load drum like one shots here but you're not limited to these. You just use sound recordings, loops, one-shot synthesizers. With the 16 pitches mode, you can create uh, monophonic basses, synths, whatever you want to use there. You can load a lot of one-shot elements. So you can load any kind of sample into these 16 slots, which means that uh, if you include like four drum tracks, you have 64 tracks, which Let's be honest, it's a lot more than just four tracks. To me, it seems enough. During this last week, I tried to experiment with certain things. I didn't try to make particularly good songs. I focused more on creating something that kind of breaks my limits, breaks the device's limits to try to get familiar with what the device can do. I'm going to share some of that knowledge with you just because I would love to see more people use this device to create awesome songs, awesome beats in different music styles. So the goal of this video is for you to become familiar with how you can create these flexible sets that can be used uh, with uh, different styles of music. Let's break it down. So you have four tracks. The, traditionally how able to move sets it up for you is you have one drum track that's for rhythm and you have three synthesizer tracks or sample tracks, melodic sampler tracks, like tonal elements, melodies, harmonies, so that kind of stuff. But the Ableton drum rack also allows you to create some of those melodic elements and you can also add harmonies there by sampling. Why not use those drum tracks for something else other than drums? That's what I'm going to show you. Here we have a set in Ableton Live. I'm going to show this to you in Ableton Live because uh, taking a camera and showing it on this device doesn't really help you understand this more than showing it on a screen. So. This is how I usually set up my uh, move sets. So for the music I tend to make, I try to handle the drum and the bass together. So I have a drum and bass track where I, uh, I have like a drum rack right here with the drum samples. So that's like the rhythmical foundation of my tracks, having a solid drum uh, with a solid bass. I, I don't tend to use a lot of drums, so what I usually do is I only fill the first eight slots with drum one shots. Everything else can be like melodic. Uh, one thing that I will always add here is the bass. Um, for my kind of music, that's like a no-brainer. But in most cases, I don't really need all of these drum samples. I only need like eight. Like I need a kick drum, I need a rim shot, I need a snare, closed hi-hat, open hi-hat, maybe a ride, crash, maybe some percussion or more percussion. I mean, we have like uh, 16 tracks here, so I can add whatever I want. The one thing that I want to make sure here is that I include the bass. What I mean by bass is that you load in 
a sample that is tuned to C. If you don't want to do like pitch variation, just load like the bass note of your scale. You load the root note of the scale that uh, your song is in and you hit that and it will fit into your song. For all of the other things, you can use percussion, you can use vocal chops, you can use like sky is the limit. One thing that's really important here is that if you use this kind of structure, then you might not fill every slot and that's perfectly fine. You don't need to have like 34 tracks that are full on packed to the brim. What you want to do is only use the elements that you really need to use. This is not a race to use all the computing power in your able to move because you paid for it. Focus on the core elements of your music. What I also like to have is the second track as a sampler track. So everything goes here. You can set your loops here. You can also set harmonies, chords, whatever you might want to add here. The reason why this is separate and it's not here with the drums and the bass is because if you mix the two together, you might want to trigger them separately. What this means is, let's say, for example, you want to play with your drum and bass here and uh, maybe you want to play a sample from your sample track and if you add it here that means that uh, you can only use this clip to trigger both the drums the bass and the sample together which kind of gives you some problems with variation so how i like to play music i start clips i start a different clip i might stop them and if you pack your sample and your drum and bass track together, you will not have that kind of flexibility, which is a, a problem for me. So also having this sampler track on a separate track makes you really easy to use these two synth tracks. So why I tend to use two synth tracks is that Ableton Live has really, really good synth engines and I think the synth engine in Move, Drift and Wavetable, they are really good. So I tend to make use of that. I think they are really good. For example, I really enjoy the frequency modulation possibilities in Drift. I think that's a really cool thing. So I tend to use these two synth tracks to make those melodic lines, thing that needs to track across octaves. Synth tracks can be whatever you pick it out to be. For example, let's say that you want to have like a key here or an arpeggio here. I tend to drop here stuff that needs to be melodic that needs to be good quality, maybe the hook of your song, maybe you want to add keys here, whatever, it's your kind of music, you know what you want to do. I really always tend to use more than two synth tracks for full songs. This is where the second track comes in. So the second track is my sampler track. And what's cool about this sampler track is that this is a drum rack with uh, 16 drum samplers. So traditionally drum samplers are for one shots, but what you can also do is uh, you can turn them from trigger to gate and that enables you to play that, that sample as long as you hold down the note. What you can also do here is just hold it for a really long time and that kind of basically gives you the same effect than uh, as holding it down but it will continue for 60 second stops or as long as your sample uh, is. So you're not limited to using the drum racks as uh, drum one shots. You can always use them as like uh, generic sampler slots. You can add like uh, melodic instruments tuned uh, to whatever key you're using. So you have a lot of opportunities if you dedicate a track to your samples directly. For example, let's say that right here I'm using uh, a chord based instrument and I only use it to trigger like a C minor chord every eight bars. So wasting an entire uh, synth track to that 
seems kind of wasteful when you only have like four tracks. What you can do in this scenario is uh, you mute everything else, you turn on resampling, you let that chord trigger and you resample into one of your sampler slots. And right now you just saved a single track that you would otherwise sacrifice to that only sound that you have. Basically that's it. This set is really flexible and powerful because it allows you to experiment with two synth tracks which is how many synth tracks the circuit tracks has and uh, people make really good music with that device so don't tell me that you can make good music with two synth tracks because you can but you have more than that you have 16 sampler slots here and another 16 sampler slots here that gives you 34 tracks for making your music as good as possible. And I think that's enough. Okay, I know that uh, this doesn't really have like a live demonstration. It's still something that I'm working on. Most of my songs that I currently have don't follow this kind of formula or structure, but I wanted to share it with you guys so that uh, you're familiar with it. So one problem with this kind of setup is that it doesn't really work with the factory uh, drum racks. So you most likely need to make your own drum racks with only the core element of your uh, drum samples that you want to use because there are just like a lot of things that I don't normally use in a drum rack uh, that are included in the factory samples. For example, uh, there's one factory sample drum rack that has like four chords, which is nice, but I wouldn't use them for the music I tend to make. So this set this structure is for people who want to overcome that four track limit uh, this is for people who want to build uh, their entire songs within ableton move it's not for people who just want to have fun who are fine with having one drum one bass and two keys or two synths that's those people they, they should just stick to whatever ableton gives you so this is it this is how i'm going to structure my new songs going forward and to basically have the flexibility of working with synth tracks, samples, drums and bass all within a single Ableton move set until I max out all the clips that I need. I really hope that it helps you overcome that four track limitations if you have a problem with that. So basically I want to give a shout out to all the people who have uh, watched my video I didn't really expect it to blow up the way it did. I want to thank all of you for liking, subscribing and basically just watching my videos. It helps a lot. Uh, my channel grew a lot, which really surprised me. So I want to thank you for that. So if you like this video, consider liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing how we work with Able to Move, how you try to circumvent those four track limits, how you work with the songs you make share the knowledge. I would really love to see this device grow. Uh, I would really love to see more people working with it. So yeah, thank you. Until next time. Bye.